Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome back if you've been before. Obviously, I have you either way. On this channel, we talk books and today I am recording a book haul. Um, I have a fairly big book haul to record today because um, I have just come back from being on a, a holiday trip, um, a vacation, and on vacation I always like to go shopping for books and looking for what I can get at um, secondhand shops that I don't always have access to so you know it's always interesting things to find around about and find things I did uh, as well as a few books that I had already um, purchased before I went on my trip so I've got quite a few books to show you today um, I'm going to split them up we're going to look at the books that are brand new um, books that I've ordered or gone into a bookshop and bought brand new um, uh, and then we'll look at the secondhand books and see what's what apologies for the lighting um it's night time <laughs> normally i film during the day when the lighting's a bit more stable but every time i seem to be turning my head it's um triggering the lighting so apologies for that and uh, i hope it's not bothering you too much all right let's have a look at the books that i got this month um the first thing i'm going to show you is uh i um got my next my second discovery pack um and this is from amplify bookstore um, and if you want to have a look for them, they're on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok at, the, at Amplify Bookstore, all one word. Um, uh, this is the discovery pack. And so every two months you get two books um, and each uh, pack is focused on a geographic area. Um, you get to choose uh, from a selection of books what you would like. Um, the geographic area for this um, time around was Asia and uh, the books that I selected um, were Showers of Luck by Nadia Aisha. Uh, this is a book that is set in Singapore um, and it's to do with uh, a story of two young people who are growing up and falling in love in pre-war colonial Singapore. Um, and the second book that I chose is a non-fiction book called A Stone is Most Precious Where It Belongs, a memoir of Uyghur loss, exile and hope. Um, so, of course, this is um, from China. Um, the call number for this one is 305.89. For those of you following along at home with the non-fiction reading challenge, um, so if this sounds interesting to you, uh, you might want to look that one up in your library. Um as well as getting the two books, you also get a little artwork. Um, and this, I don't know if it's a coaster. It's inside. It's circular. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the little artwork that came with the Discovery Pack this time around. So that was a nice little, a li nice little thing to get along with the books. Uh, then I've got some more books to show you that are new. Um, I went to um, a favourite book sh a bookshop of mine um, and I bought two non-fiction books from there. I think that's all I got in the new books to show you. Um, one is a book by Tori Amos, the musician. It's called Resistance, a songwriter's story of hope, change and courage. The call number is, it's a long one, 782.4216602. Um, so this is... Uh, her just really talking about how her work, um, which has sort of always been somewhat political, always been um, very honest and in at times very brutal. Um, so sort of talking about um, her experiences and her thoughts about things. Um, so I'm she's a musician that I have a lot of respect for and enjoy her music. So um, when I saw this, I decided to pick it up. I didn't know it existed before then. Um, so that was exciting. Uh, another one, don't ask me why, but I couldn't go past this book. Uh, another nonfiction was Index, A History of the <laughs> by Dennis Duncan. Um, so this is literally just about the history of indexes in books. Um, the call number for this one is 025.3. So I'm really, really looking forward to um, getting to this one. It's a penguin. Um, so if you're looking for it, uh, that's where you need to search. <laughs> um, okay, so that's all of the nonfiction in the new books. 
Um, one that came quite recently in the mail, um, which is one that I'd had my eye on, it was on sale, so I picked it up, is um, We Are All So Good at Smiling by Amber McBride. Um, this, can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful the cover of this book is. Um, this is a hardback edition. Um, this was published in 2021, I believe, uh, but it might be 2022. <gasps> it's 2023, brand new. Um, however, it does say it was a finalist for the 2021 National Book Award for Young People's Literature. Uh, and then a number of awards from 2021 and 2022. So perhaps this is, um, or maybe that's talking about a different book because there is a picture of another book there. So maybe this book was the one that was nominated for awards. Don't know. Um, anyway, so this is uh, about a character called Whimsy who is in a hospital for treatment of clinical depression. When she meets a boy named Fairy, she recognises they both have magic in the marrow of their bones. After they are released, Fairy and his family move to the same neighbourhood as Whimsy. The two friends come to realise that their lifelines may have twined and untwined many times before. Um, sounds like a really interesting uh, connection um, and concept for a story to me. Um, another one that I picked up is uh, Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. I believe this is a Frankenstein retelling um, where the genders, well, the gender of the doctor is a, she's a woman rather than a man. Um, so she, ah, no, here we go. So it says, clever, pretty and odd, Angelica Frankenstein has run out of suitors when assisting in her brother Victor's groundbreaking experiment to bring a reassembled man back to life. She realises that having an agreeable gentleman convalescing in the guest suite might be her chance to let a man get to know the real her. Um, so. Crazy. Um, so I, this just sounded really interesting. So I thought I'd give it a go. I got this. um on sale also for quite cheap. <laughs> um, I've sort of been eyeing it off for a little while, so I was glad to pick it up. Um, this one I picked up in a bookshop that I haven't visited for a long time and had just popped into. Uh, it's called A Place to Hang the Moon by Kate Albus. Um, and this is set in wartime, World War II evacuations from London. Um, and it's a three siblings who are evacuated from London to the countryside, but they're hoping that their temporary living situation will turn into a forever family. Um, so it's a sort of wholesome um, narrative along those lines. Um, this is one that I picked up that I didn't know anything about, um, but it just sort of had the combination of my all my favourite things um, in a book um, that made it seem like it would be the book for me. Uh, it's called The Book of Eve by Meg Clothier. Uh, it's pages hide an ancient secret the truth could cost her life. Um, so it says, in the name of the father, not a word of this. Her letters are forbidden. Beatrice is the convent's librarian. Convent? Librarian? <laughs> For years she has shunned the company of her sisters, finding solace only with her manuscripts. Then one carnival night, two women, bleeding and stricken, are abandoned outside the convent's walls. Moments from death, one of them presses something into Beatrice's hands, a bewitching book whose pages have a dangerous life of their own. Crazy book. But men of faith want the book destroyed. As, and a zealous preacher has tracked it to her door. Her sister's lives or her obsession. Beatrice must decide. The book's voice is growing stronger and ancient power uncoils. Will she dare to listen? Mm. It has like all the things. I'm so excited. Um, and another book that is uh, right up my alley that I just had to get myself a copy of as soon as I heard of its existence is The Prize, A Portrait, A Scandal, Two Lives Change Forever by Kim E. Anderson. Um, so it says it's inspired by the real life events of the 1943 Archibald controversy. So in Australia, the Archibald Prize is a portrait um, art prize that has been running for a very long time. Um, and this was this is based on true so I, like it's a fictionalized account of 
true events that occurred. Um, so when two artists enter the 1943 Archibald Prize, a scandal erupts that grips not only the art world, but the nation. A poignant love story with shattering consequences inspired by a real life event. So basically what happens is, so it's in the World War II era, so it's in the 40s, and um, uh, homosexual uh, relationships are illegal at that time in Australia and uh, also it's a shifting time in our art scene um, and so we've got modernism that has uh, sort of taken over. Um, we've got an artist called William Dobell who's a very well-known Australian artist now. Um, at the time he painted a portrait of his lover and fellow artist Joshua Smith and he won this prize and then it sort of becomes um there a protest is lodged by his competitors um who are claiming that the painting is a caricature because it's a very stylistically very different so it's a sort of shifting time in the way that art um sort of happened in australia at the time um and then it sort of it became also um a bigger thing because of the subject of the painting in question um and the fact that it was his homosexual lover who at the time and that was illegal at the time so anyway this just sounded like a fantastic book i have followed the archibald prize for years it's um one of my favorite art events to go to um each year uh, i'll be going shortly because it's um just about on um so yeah i'm very excited to read that book so two books in a row that were just like, oh, these are these are Kelly books. So very, very excited about that. All right. I have a big stack now of, um, I was about to say nonfiction books. So it's not nonfiction books. They are secondhand books is what I meant to say. Um, so I'm going to show those to you. Now, I'm going to show you two first that I am probably quite excited about. Um, and that is because they are two books that are on the long list for the women's prize that I managed to pick up secondhand, which at this point, while the, the shortlist hasn't at the time of filming, hasn't been released yet. Um, this is like, these are current books that uh, people are reading and I was able to get them very cheaply. <laughs> um, so that was exciting. Uh, the first one is uh, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, don't know if I'm going to read this one within the Women's Prize sort of time um, because I've not read David Copperfield, which this is a retelling of, and I kind of think I'd like to read them together. I, I know you don't have to. I've heard other people say that it's not necessary to read the two books together, but I think I would like to if I'm going to get to it. So I don't know if I'm going to get to this one super soon, but um, I was glad to find it secondhand um, to add to my collection. The other one I was very excited to find. It's a pod by Laylene Paul. This is the one that's told from the perspective of a dolphin. Um, and this is uh, a book that I was quite excited about. Um, reading from the long list for the women's prize I got this for two dollars I was so excited <laughs> when I found it in the shop um, obviously they hadn't realized that it was a literal you know current book um, so yeah very very exciting uh, then we move on to things that are also exciting but not that kind of exciting <laughs> um, so this one is Fight Night by Miriam Taves uh, who is I believe a Canadian author if I'm not mistaken um, and I've heard other people um, raving about uh, Miriam Taves as an author and also about this book specifically. So I was glad to find myself a copy of that. Um, this one is Pulse Points by Jennifer Down, which is a short story collection, I believe. Jennifer Down wrote one of my five star uh, reads of last year, um, which was the winner of the, uh, not the Stella, it was the um, the other one, the Miles Franklin Award, um, which I read the uh, all of um, the long list of last year. I'm thinking about doing the same thing again this year. We'll see when the long list gets released, if I do that. Anyway, um, her book was the winner. It was also, coincidentally, my favourite of the long list. Um, so when I saw this collection, I decided to pick it up because, uh, so this was an author by, it's also a really beautiful cover. Um, I'm not sure what the uh if it's meant to be anything in particular but it, it's beautiful beautiful <laughs> well done nice art 
Okay, then we have this one. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this, um, but it means River of Dreams, um, and it's by Anita uh, Heiss, who is an Australian Aboriginal author. I have not read any of her books before. I have, I do have another book of hers in my collection that I got last year, I want to say, um, but I haven't yet read it. So, um, but she's an author that I definitely want to get to, and this is really nice. I don't know if you can see this, but at the top, there's a sort of um, embossed, it's a bit hard to see, I'm just trying to get it to catch the light, an embossed um, illustration there as well, which is really quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm very keen to get to this one. Uh, this book is All the Birds Singing by Evie Wilde. Um, and this one is all about a man who is the sole resident of an old farmhouse on an unnamed island. A place of ceaseless rains and battering winds. It's um, just, oh, sorry, I'm saying man because the character's called Jake, but it's a woman. It's just her, her untamed companion dog and a flock of sheep, which is how she wanted it to be. But something is coming for the sheep every few nights. One is picked off and left in rags. It could be anything. There are foxes in the woods, a strange boy and a strange man, rumours of an obscure, formidable beast, and there's there is Jake's unknown past as well, perhaps breaking into the present, a story hidden thousands of miles away and years ago. In a landscape of different colour and sound, a story held in the scars that stripe her back. It sounds really, really good. Um, then I picked this one up. Um, so I read Anne Glenn Connor's um, Lady in Waiting, which is her memoir. Um, and she has subsequently released a couple of... Um, fiction like sort of I guess cozy mystery I guess um and this one is called A Haunting at Holcomb which was her it's either the her um family like when she where she grew up or it's the estate where she that she married into I can't recall from reading Lady in Waiting um but anyway this is a fiction book a mystery um that I'm interested in getting to um, uh, this was a cover by uh, and interesting title by. Um, this one's called The Golem and the Ginny by Hel uh, Helen Wecker or Helene Wecker. Um, this one I don't really know anything about, but we've got a golem. So a golem being a creature made out of clay and brought to life. Um, we've got a genie uh, called Apmad, um, and then they sort of join forces in this story it just sounded really interesting it's a thick one um so i don't know when i'm going to get to it but we'll see um it just looked really really interesting Ooh, my pile in front of me is getting a little bit crazy uh three more books to show you um this is one that just sounded really interesting to me it's the tiger ladies a memoir of Kashmir by suda cool um this just sounded really interesting as a, you know a place that i'm interested in and um you know because it's supposed to be a really really beautiful place Kashmir. um so yeah I, and this is sort of like talking about conflict and sort of life um in in the area um another book that i picked up is idol by louise o'neill this is one that i had um on my wish list so it will be coming off my wish list because i now have a copy which i picked up secondhand um so this is uh here we go for samantha miller's young fans her girls she's everything they want to be she's an oracle telling them how to live their lives how to be happy how to find and honor their truth and her career is booming she's just hit three million followers her new book chased has gone straight to the top of the bestseller lists and she's appearing at sellout events. Determined to speak her truth and bear all to her adoring fans, she's written an essay about her sexual awakening as a teenager with her female best friend, Lisa. She's never told a soul, but now she's telling the world. The essay goes viral. But then, years since they last spoke, Lisa gets in touch to say that she doesn't remember it that way at all. Her memory of that night is far darker. It's, Sam, it's Sam's word against Lisa's, so who gets to tell the story? Whose truth is really a lie? So that sounds amazing. And the last book to show you is this fabulous cover, uh, Girl Waits With Gun by Amy Stewart. Um, so this is a, uh, we've got a, a woman who's sort of like doesn't fit the mould, um, is sort of, uh, you know, not interested in marriage or domestic affairs, uh, family secret, um, we've got a powerful, ruthless factory owner runs down their family buggy, 
A dispute over damages turns into a war of bricks, bullets and threats as he unleashes his gang on their farm. The sheriff enlists her help and it turns out that Constance has a knack for outwitting and disarming the criminal element. This just sounds like a real romp kind of of a book so I'm very excited about having a copy of this one I think this is one that I've bought on my kindle before that I haven't yet gotten to um so I'm quite excited to get to that one at some point all right well that is the haul guys thanks so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed um watching me talk about all of these fabulous books that I've been able to pick up um in the month of April yes april <laughs> um and that you perhaps heard about a book that you hadn't heard about before and are interested in um, i'll have a list of all of the books that i've talked about down in the description below so please feel free to have a look there um, to see if you want to follow up about any of these books um, if you need the details all right thanks so much for watching and i will catch you on the next one bye